Hello everyone and welcome to... <laughs> Can we not destroy my hair please? <laughs> Charlie! Hey! Charlie! Charlie! Charlie, I need the elastic, please! <laughs> okay! So with no hairstyle at all, I guess. You wanna play? Go. Let's get into this video. So I want to start out by saying that I have been very busy for the last couple of weeks. So this is actually not the video I plan on making because that's a little bit more of work. Um, get up there then. It's a little bit more of work and also I wanted to upload once a week, um, which has been going absolutely amazing as you can tell. However, the reason I am busy is actually because I got accepted into my dream university. So I am going to study uh, at the end of the summer. So I am in the process of moving right now. Um, and by that I actually mean <laughs> that I haven't found a place to live yet. So. That's great. It's been a couple of stressful weeks, obviously, so that's the reason why I haven't been uploading. I had this idea and I really wanted to make a video on it, so uh, here I am. So following up on my Pinus guide, I thought that I would share some tips with you guys that I have gathered from having Charlie for a year now-ish. Uh, if you didn't know, Pinus gets to like adulthood around two years of age, or at least that's where the hormones start to kick in, so... Uh, I do like to talk about what others don't, or at least what I don't see a lot on the internet. So I have gathered five tips that I hope are somewhat new to you guys, or at least will help you in some sort of way. I do also want to mention that these things don't happen from one day to another. It's more like habits that you can have or create with your bird, whether it's a baby, which makes it a lot easier or if it's an adult bird that you want to work with. So let's get into it. So the first thing I see a lot of new bird and pet owners make is be around their new pet 24-7. And I totally get it. Uh, you've been excited to get this new pet. Often it's a cute new puppy or a kitten or a baby bird and therefore they're way more tolerant and you just can't stop cuddle with them all the time and obviously you're excited and sometimes overprotective and want to be around them all the time. And I totally get it. However, <laughs> you are going to leave home at some point and leave your pet home alone. Whether it's a short trip to the store or maybe you have to go to a family birthday for the whole day, your pet is going to be home alone. And I did mention this in my guide talking about small cage cages and that you have to be realistic because you are going to leave home, which is also why a big cage and enrichment of course is important. But another thing that's more important is actually to condition your bird to be home alone. Now, like many of you, I am currently enjoying my summer vacation with Charlie, of course. But before that, I actually worked a full-time job when I got her and I cannot address how heavy I am that Charlie is fully capable of being by herself for a long period of time. Now, every bird is different, of course, but note that the pioneers are known for being very chill and self-entertaining, which is also why I chose the breed, because I knew I had to work that year, I knew I had to go to university, and I knew I had to study and maybe be out for longer periods of time. So the process with Charlie has been fairly easy, but really the only thing I did was just leave when I had to leave. And then Charlie at no point showed signs of stress or anything like that. And I think it's because that I conditioned her from a young age, which is very much easier than conditioning a, an adult bird. So leave when you have to leave, like go to the store, go to that birthday or that. But of course, spend time with your bird when you're home with it and do your research on the breed and what the breed, breed needs are. Of course, do make sure that you have enrichment for your bird, lots of toys so that it actually has something to do while you are gone. 
it is way 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 easier to adjust a baby bird to being home alone. The older the bird gets, the more difficult it becomes to break habits and create new routines when the bird is not used to it. So if you have a very clingy bird, don't leave them for a whole day. That could be very stressful for them. But start training with maybe leaving them for half an hour and then move on to an hour and so on to start creating this new routine with them. A good example on why this is important is actually what we like to refer to as Corona pets. Um, during the coronavirus, people bought a lot of new pets because they were home and they had a lot of time. And then all of a sudden, when the pandemic is over, they have to go to work again. And a lot of people ended up with pets having separation anxiety because they had never been left home alone before ever. So not only is that very frustrating for the owner, it's also very frustrating and not fair to the pet. Now a thing I have loved about Charlie is how outgoing she is and how much she likes other people, rather it being adults or children. She never really hesitates to go to their finger or sit on their shoulder and just be a super super nice bird to everyone. And it has especially been nice when I have to go out for a day and have needed my mom or my sister to take care of her and her not really having any problem with that whatsoever. Now if we go back to the over cuddling your baby bird thing, if you and only you are together with your bird every single day, every hour of the day, it's only natural that your bird will end up what people like to call a one person bird. And I do get that some birds are just prone to do it even though the owner tries to prevent it. Um, but that is also why I think it's important to just break this habit from a young age and get them on a lot of different hands and get them out and talk with a lot of different people. Obviously they will have a stronger bond to you and you could be their favorite human, just like Charlie likes me more. At least I hope so. You better because I pay for you. Now shout out to my old workplace who actually allowed me to take Charlie with me to work, which meant that she could chill, sit on my shoulder while I did some unpackaging and all that stuff. So she got exposed to a lot of different machinery and noises and also got socialized with a lot of different people, children especially. And it was just so nice. Also in my free flight training, having this desensitization from a very young age was super nice, but also the socializing aspect really helped her a lot. Now do remember to instruct people on how to hold your bird so that it doesn't have the opposite effect in case they should drop the bird or anything like that. Your bird doesn't see other people as bad things. So just instruct them and remember to reward your bird for going on to other people. Maybe even have other people treat your bird so that your bird sees them as an even better thing. So why do I think that this is so important? Well, it is just very practical. <laughs> um, if you ever have family and friends come over to your house, uh, your bird will be less stressed knowing that strangers aren't anything dangerous. Um, if you have kids or anything like that, having a bird get along with your family members and all that is also very important so that they aren't aggressive towards anyone. Uh, hell, if you need someone to look after your bird, uh, you're handling them a less deadly creature because they are used to being around other people. So it's just very practical in your daily -day life to have a bird that gets along with different people. Now this tip in combination with the next one has been a huge factor in boosting Charlie's confidence and overall calmness. So uh, let's look at it. Okay, so imagine this for a second. You have been in the same place for like several years with your favorite human being, that's me. The good old routine you love, your favorite toys, and it's been like this for years. And all of a sudden your human puts you in a crate and takes you to a different place. Something about the air is off, and what's that, a predator? All sorts of scary sounds, the wind, leaves, cars, birds, you start to panic, suddenly you are at this weird place, you don't know these surroundings, and everything makes you very uncomfortable and very very scared. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? 
I would really recommend that you somehow take your bird outside and get them used to other settings and different places, new sounds and smells. And the reason behind that is that I believe it just creates such a confident bird that is so relaxed in different situations. And maybe more than we realize, it's so nice to make them have this ability in your day-to-day -day life to just be able to adjust to different settings so quickly. And no, absolutely never ever take your bird outside without it being in a carrier or a harness unless it's very, very free flight trained and, and all that stuff. Don't take your bird outside, even if the wings are clipped, which you shouldn't do in the first place. But if the wings are clipped or it hasn't flown or anything like that, never take it outside without a harness or in a carrier or anything like that. Take your safety precautions. Don't do it. Now it's no secret that I am free flight training Charlie and though free flight isn't everyone's cup of tea, I just think that you should take your bird outside in a carrier or a harness or outdoor cage or aviary, whatever you want to call it, giving the bird the opportunity to experience different settings. I think is so rewarding and it's so, so much easier to take your bird to a trip to the vet or a trip to somewhere. What do I know? Now using Charlie as an example, again, um, she adjusts so well to different settings. It's, it's incredible. And if you're a crazy bird person like me, you like to take your bird with you everywhere. And I just enjoy sitting at a cafe, having Charlie by my side and her not being stressed, but just sitting there enjoying her surroundings and getting some stimulation going. And I just love it. <laughs> and again, let's say that you need someone to look after your bird, but they don't have the opportunity to come to you. You can now take your bird to them without the bird being so stressed out by these other surroundings and all that stuff. And it's just so nice. Now taking a bird outside for the first time is really a lot for them. So what I would recommend is getting a cage or a carrier or anything like that and taking them outside for the first time because those are the safest options in my opinion. And then maybe just start off with five minutes and then go on to 10 minutes, just like with the home alone training, it's all about conditioning them to it. So start out small and then take them out for a longer period of time and then they will learn it eventually. Now, some birds do adjust quicker than others, and pinus actually often get in the same box as African greys when it comes to personality traits. So things like fearful and careful and skittish and all that stuff are often things that I hear about pinus, but I have yet to see any of these things in Charlie. And that's, I think it's because I just take her outside from a young age, tooting my own horn here, I know, but <laughs> taking them outside, I think it's, it's such a rewarding thing to do because they just just get used to so many new things. So every time they see a new thing, it's not so scary to them. So yeah, I think taking a bird outside really gives them a confidence boost and is really, really worth putting your time into. However, be very careful. Never take them outside without a harness or in a carrier, as I mentioned. Just be very careful and take your safety precautions. Now training isn't only just mental stimulation, but it also just creates a common language between you and your bird. Now target training is really just where you need to get the bird to touch the end of a stick and then click with a clicker. And this sort of teaches the bird that whenever it gets the click, it gets a treat. And so this is the foundation to teaching a bird all sorts of different tricks. And it really creates this language, whereas the bird knows that when it hears the click, it gets a treat. So target training really just sets the foundation for teaching a bird different kinds of tricks. And um, sometimes they don't have any like usefulness to them other than let's be honest, it's fun and it looks so freaking cute. Now, besides from target training, having a great recall, I also think is essential. If your bird gets somewhere it shouldn't go, you can recall it down to you. Or should the unfortunate happen and your bird gets outside, having a great recall can be life-saving. Even though birds tend to forget everything they have learned when they get outside because it's so different. But remember the previous tip, if your bird is conditioned a little bit to being outside, the recall would have a higher success rate and your bird wouldn't get scared so much that it will just fly away. 
Now this sort of goes hand in hand with taking them out more, but it's just so nice being outside and having a good time and not thinking about getting home to Charlie because she's actually out with me. Um, we have this local pub in our city and I'm actually allowed to just bring Charlie, like they know me and <laughs> they know her. So yeah, just take them outside, enjoy your day with them, have them being involved in your everyday life. Uh, I take Charlie with me to family birthdays if I'm allowed. I take her with me on dog walks. I take her with me to vacation if possible and just really involve them in your family. And it's not just outside I'm talking about, just involving your bird in what you're doing inside, whether that's cooking or chilling around the house or whatever you're doing, just involve your bird in whatever it is. It's good for your bird and it's good for you because I hope you want to be around your bird. It just creates this bond and it's really what having a bird should feel like. Now this is a little bonus fun tip that I thought I'd add and that is bathing your bird. Finding their bath trigger can be some, a little hard sometimes. Um, some birds like the spray bottle, some birds like to have a bowl full of water and bath in that. Some birds like to join you in the shower and all that. So it's a little different from bird to bird. Charlie really enjoys the spray bottle, but she will only bathe when I have the vacuum on, which was kind of fun when I found out about it, but that was very fun. I'll insert a clip of what it looks like here. So yeah, I, I don't know why, she just likes the vacuum. So yeah, those are my five tips for sort of having a more confident and calm pet. Charlie has been such a lovely companion throughout the first year and I really think that these things that I have done in my day to day life really has helped and that is why I wanted to share them with you guys. Obviously. I'm not saying that you're a bad bird owner if you don't do these things. These are just things that have helped me and really suited my lifestyle and how I want to include Charlie in it. So do whatever you want with you bird, just do your research. This has helped me. So uh, I hope that you guys can use some of it as well. Now Charlie decided to nap for the outro. So I just stole my mom's dog Gizmo. This is Gizmo. <laughs> Subscribe or I won't feed him.